Hi, I'm Jim. Today I'm going to talk to you about golf clubs and the rules. Today, Junior! Established by the USGA. So, here I have a Nike Tour driver, and when Nike designed this golf club, they had to receive approval from the USGA in order to use it. So, in its state, it's allowed to be used by the USGA because it is listed on the USGA as allowable clubs to be used on tour, to be used in a competition. If I walk in and I say, hmm, I'd rather, you know, adjust this by adding a piece of masking tape, it may not exactly be able to be allowed to be in play because it could be deemed that, oh, well, this adjustment to your golf club does not meet the current restrictions. In addition to that, it may enhance uh, the actual direction or the path of the golf ball. So the USGA is highly, highly stringent on what can and cannot uh, be used in play. Um, the number of golf clubs you are allowed to have in a game is 14. Uh, that was established uh, back in, I believe, the early 1900s. A golfer came to a game and filled a bag with about like 30, 35 golf clubs. And he ended up winning a tour and they said, okay, wait a minute, that's, that's a little too much. We'll limit to 14, call it a day. So in its current state, you walk out, you play with 14 clubs. If one of your clubs breaks while playing, you are allowed to repair it as long as you do not delay playing time for yourself or any other player. They do not want to have an unfair advantage of you allowing more time to prep for the next hole or one way or another. Um, if your club is deemed unfixable, you can replace it. However, the club cannot come from another player that is currently playing in that competition. Hi, my name is Ethan. I'm going to be talking to you about rule number 18 in golf which concerns what happens whenever a ball that is at rest is moved from its place after it has been hit from the tee box. Basically the essence of the rule is that if you pull back your club and accidentally hit the ball forward, that counts as a stroke. Now, in other scenarios where a ball is accidentally moved, such as if you are searching for the ball, or if an opponent or an opponent's caddy accidentally moves the ball, the ball must simply be replaced back to where it was originally placed. However, if you or your own caddy or your partner move the ball by accident, that counts as one penalty stroke. Hi, my name's Lauren, and I'm going to be talking to you today about when to and not to yell for while playing golf and why this is very important. Four! <laughs> Fine shot. Ah. Oh, I should have yelled too. Here are a few examples. So the way to properly execute yelling for is if you believe that your ball is suddenly going in the direction of someone who is in the midst of playing golf, as you can see our friend Brandon over here, then you should yell for immediately after to give them the heads up. Four. <laughs> This is another thing you should not do whenever concerning the etiquette of yelling for. Yo, Brendan! What's up? Oh. Yo, my bad. Four. As you can see, the etiquette of yelling for is very important in order to not injure other players on the course. Hi, I'm Tyler, and I'm going to talk to you about the golf etiquette of standing distances when someone else is teeing off or hitting. Now, there's not really a set distance, but it's important that you should always be out of their line of vision and at least a couple yards back to make sure that you're not going to be hit by their swing and also that you won't mess up their swing by them seeing you or hearing you. All right, now for example, this is a bad distance because I am well within both her vision and her swinging. So if she was to swing back, it would be a very bad spot for her. Hey Tyler, could you maybe back up about 10 feet that way? <laughs> sure thing. Thanks. So I'm Brendan, I'm here to talk about golf cart etiquette today. So that is in reference to how far to stay away from tee boxes and greens, as well as there are certain areas on the course that are cart path only and certain rules to take when say it's a rainy day and we're going to issue a 90 degree rule on the course. Um, as far as the golf cart itself, whenever you come to a stop you want to use the parking brake at the top of the foot brake. So when it's in drive here, you start to go, you want to make sure that the cart is actually in park by clicking it in twice 
which keeps the car from rolling backwards um, or continuing to roll forwards. So here we are about 10 feet away from the tee box. You don't want to get any closer than this to the tee box and you can definitely not just pull your cart right up on top of the tee box. We want to keep the, the playing surface nice and, and level for, uh, for future play on the course. So when we're on a par three, what we're going to have to do is there's going to be normally just a cart path only rule to where there's just the path between the tee box and the green that will be used for the cart. Normally there's a mark that will signify where the carts are to go, where you know that you're too close to the green so that you have to get off of the fairway and pull onto the cart path here. Also make sure to be really aware of where individuals are on the course so you aren't looking at the camera and drive right into them. You also want to make sure you don't just drive around like a crazy person. Definitely shouldn't do that. Definitely don't carry any passengers on the back of the car. If you follow these rules and etiquettes, you'll have a good time on the golf course and keep everyone else safe. Until next time, play straight.